Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to worship. We're so glad to have you here in person and online with us gathering us today. And on a day where the weather is a little bit crazy and a little bit different, um, we thank you for all that can be here. And we're also thankful that we have an online service. As you pulled in today or maybe as went past the church, you'll see that we have a new sign out front. Um, we're working on getting that programmed. And so by hopefully middle of the week, we'll have some other stuff on there besides just watch fire on it. So that's our goal. That was given because we have two funds from Marianne Riley. You might know that name. And a mayor, a mayor house fund both was able to make that possible for us to put that sign up there. So we're very grateful for that. Today, third spot, which is our 6th through 12th grade ministry. We'll meet here at the church from 5.30 to 7 for some bingo, but not just normal bingo. It is always at church. It's extreme bingo and a pickleball tournament, so we'd love to have you here. This morning is a special day for Thatcher Anderson Thompson. Um, he's sitting right back there. Where is it? Right? Put your hand in the air. There he is. Today he will be celebrating his first communion with us. Um, Thatcher is the grandson of Lori Dennison, great-grandson of Dick Lehman son of Joe and Jamie, right? Jessica. 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 Um, we're so glad to have all of you here. We're excited to celebrate that with you this morning, Thatcher. Um, so during the communion, when we get started, they'll come up and do it first, and then, and then Rick will direct all the rest of you up here to receive it. This also allows me to remind you at home, if you're going to participate with us today in communion, um, you want to have your bread and wine prepared by we get to that time in the service. Last week, Pastor John and I asked if anyone was interested in doing a, a, a Bible study during Lent. You'll see in the Connect that this week we're actually we're going to offer one during Lent um, on the Wednesdays of Lent at 6.30. But as you also see on the Connect, Lent is not far away. Ash Wednesday will have two services, one at noon and one at 6.30. That's February 17th. So believe it or not, that's not very far away. Um, in the following Wednesdays, we will start those Bible studies at 6.30, and they will all be done virtually. Today at 12.30 is our annual meeting. Um, if you go to our church website, not Facebook, not Facebook where you're on here, our church website, felconline.org, you can go to 2021 Annual Meeting, click on that. It takes you to the page, and if you want to watch it Zoom, you just click on the Zoom link. If you want to call in, it tells you what to do. And then if you want to come here at 12.30, you can also come and participate in the meeting by sitting here and watching the meeting as well. We hope you will join us. Lastly, I just want to give out a thank you for the January Giving Tree, the R Shelves, which is the food pantry at the high school. Um, the response has been amazing. If you walked in the door today, all those there, and then there's so much more in the back. I always knew this church was pretty amazing, but to see this response this, this last month is what I needed. I needed to see it. Hopefully you all were able to see the church coming together. In the midst of all the things that are going on in the world, we continue to be the hands and feet of Christ. We continue to be the church in this community. And that's an important thing that we get to do. This takes me to thanking you for being here this morning to gather, to sing, to pray, and this morning to receive the sacraments of Holy Communion. Thank you for being here both in person and online, thank you for making worship a part of your life today. We're glad you're here. Our worship begins this morning with confession and forgiveness, reminding us that we are broken people. We are broken people that need to hear the words that we, we need to say the words of confession, but then also hear the words of forgiveness. So I invite you to please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who spoke light into creation, who calls us to listen and follow, who sends us to shine like stars. Let us come before God confessing our sin. Let us take a moment for our own personal confession this morning. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against our sisters and brothers and against you. We cherish the values of this world. We cause others to stumble. The earth is wounded by our excess. 
Have mercy, O oh God. Forgive us, renew us, and raise us up on earth's wing, that we may do your will with courage and delight. Amen. Brothers and sisters gathered here in person and online, hear the voice from heaven. You are my own, my beloved. God gives power to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Be cleansed, be healed. For in the name of Christ, Jesus Christ, I declare to you the forgiveness of all of your sins and the revealing of God's reign. Amen. We sing our opening song, I Will Rise.
Our litany of praise is, actually, is our psalm this morning on the psalm for the day. So please reply, respond after, after me. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Majesty and plunder mark, splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion. That all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated. Before we share the lessons, we'll take just a moment to talk most especially to youngsters watching online, a few youngsters who are here before they head off to Sunday school, but to all of us as children of God. The word is bragging, bragging. My grandma used to call it tooting your own horn. It's when you brag about being good at something. Now let's be honest. All of us might be a little shy, children aren't. If I asked what you're good at, you might put your head down and say, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Everybody is sure about one thing, two things, five things that they're really good at. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's dancing. Maybe it's math. Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's being nice. Maybe it's just being welcoming to others. You're really good at things, but sometimes we don't really like people who brag. We don't like people who brag. You're also allowed to brag about certain achievements. So today I want to look right into that camera and say to Donna and Greg Rising, wherever you are, for wherever you are, 50 years yesterday of marriage. You're allowed to brag about that. Yep, they're applauding here. 50 years of marriage, congratulations. And for any of you, if it's your anniversary or birthday, you're allowed to brag on that one day. But usually bragging isn't something we want, unless it's bragging about God. Bragging about God. Never be shy about that. We called it a litany. Sometimes we just read them, especially in this service where they're just one slide after the other and you can't see the continuity. But Psalm 111 is really a psalm that brags about the God we believe in. Great are your works. Great are your works. You cause all your wonders in the world to be remembered. You're gracious. You're full of compassion. You've shown your people the power of your works. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. They stand fast forever and ever. You sent redemption to your people. That's us. You redeemed us. You redeemed us. So holy and awesome is your name. It's a word that says maybe to boys and girls online, boys and girls here, but all of us as the children of God, nobody really likes you to brag a lot about yourself. But there's absolutely nothing wrong to know that you're good at things. And there's absolutely nothing wrong to brag about the God we believe in. Let's share a prayer together. Hello, God. Hello, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving we want to brag about that. We want to brag about that. that you love us and you love, and you love the world. And you love the world. Thank, you, Thank you, God. We love you. We love you. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. We continue with Marv sharing our reading. Oh, I just assume they know that, sorry. <laughs> Some of you, even if you're not the right age, if you feel like you just need a little refresher, go along. 
go along. Any class from what? Preschool to eighth grade. Good. The first reading this morning is from the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy, verses 15 through 20. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what you have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among your own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Second reading is from the eighth chapter, 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven and on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom, whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom are, we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now they still think of the food they eat as a food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no, off, no worse off if we do not eat, or better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause for their failing, I will never eat meat so that you may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel of Mark chapter one, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. 
They were all amazed. And they kept on asking one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and mercy and peace be unto those of you gathered here, unto those of you watching, unto each and all of us. From God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God's good timing. God's good timing. Now, we talk about that a lot, whether you realize it or not, at least as Christian people who love the Lord, whose hearts have been grabbed by Jesus Christ, God's good timing. We may not use that phrase exactly, but something like it. We'll pray for something, we'll hope for something, we wish for something, but then we always say it this way. All of that may come in God's good time. In God's good time. God's good timing. Just earlier in the chapter that we read, Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, we started in verse 21, 14 and 15, that's exactly what we have. The fullness of God's good timing. Those verses which were part of our gospel text last week say it this way, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. God's good timing. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is at hand. One of the commentaries said it this way. In other words, the reign of God is among us. It is the fullness of God's good timing. So God is at work in Jesus, and it calls for a response. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel. Right after that in Mark's gospel are seven stories in a row of response. Seven stories in a row of a positive response. Two weeks ago, it was the call of Philip and Nathaniel. Last week, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Today, Jesus teaches and heals, and an unclean spirit of all people confesses the faith. As the gospel of Mark will move forward, Peter's mother-in-law is healed, the same evening, all the sick in Capernaum were healed. Then a leper comes to Jesus, a leopard, and he is cleansed. And when he's cleansed, Jesus says to him, keep silent, don't tell anybody. But Mark's gospel says he went out, proclaimed what had happened to him to everybody he met. And then Jesus heals a paralytic. Growing up in church, it was my favorite story. It really was because the people who brought this paralytic to Jesus couldn't get to him, so they tore the roof off the house. I always got a kick out of that. Everybody liked that except the owner of the house. Heals the paralytic. All of that happens by chapter 2, verse 12. Just 36 verses. 36 verses, and we have seven stories of a positive response. The presence of God is among us. Repent and believe, and they do. They do. But then guess what happens? You know what happens. Jesus comes to a real world, to a real world. So in reality, not everybody responds with a positive belief. And we have five stories in a row now of resistance. Jesus is charged with blasphemy. Jesus is questioned about the people that he eats lunch with. Jesus is questioned about why he and his disciples don't fast. Jesus is questioned why you can pick grain and do work on the Sabbath. And Jesus is questioned about even healing people on the Sabbath. The kingdom of God is at hand. All in God's good timing, it calls for a response. Seven responses, yes, we believe. Five responses, no, not so much. And the reality is that by chapter 3, verse 6, chapter 3, verse 6, it says this. The Pharisees go out, and along with the Herodians, they take note how they might destroy him, how they might destroy Jesus. It's Epiphany. Whether you're just here for this wonderfully special baptism or whether you've been here all the time, that's what Epiphany does. It's to make clear that God is at work in Jesus the Christ. God is at work. The kingdom of God is broken in, 
And when God breaks in, God wants our response. Some responded with belief, some did not. Even today, some will believe and some won't. Our prayer has to be, our prayer has to be that for us, we believe. You're here on a snowy day. I'm always tempted to say that to you. I did to early church, all 15 of them. You get extra credit, okay? I'm going to extend it to you. Watching online is a wonderful thing, but I'm going to extend it to you. You get one free Sunday off, okay? But you still have to send in your offering that Sunday, all right? No, just kidding, just kidding. But you're here because you believe. You celebrate baptism because somehow faith is alive in your life. It's a story. We will believe it. We trust it. We own it. In this story, do you see who it is that confesses? The unclean spirit, the most unlikely one of all. The unclean spirit. Jesus is in the synagogue, okay? Every village had a synagogue, but hardly any village had a rabbi. So in the synagogue, when it was time for worship, men, okay, men who knew the law, who knew the scriptures, would simply stand and share a word. And they would share a word like, Rabbi so-and-so says this. Rabbi so-and-so says this. So Jesus took a turn. That wasn't surprising. But what was surprising is that he taught them with authority. With authority. They were astounded. They were astonished. Why? Because he didn't quote the scribes. He didn't quote the great teachers of the law. He simply shared his words. And it was shared with authority. Why could he do that? You know why? Because in God's good timing, the kingdom of God was at hand. The fullness of the Christ was among them. And in this text, the one who recognized it first, unbelievable, is the unclean spirit. I know who you are, he says. I know who you are. You are the holy one of God, the chosen one of God, bullseye, an epiphany bullseye, a confession of faith of who this Jesus is, the holy one of God. And then the unclean spirit adds this. Have you come to destroy us? Have you come to destroy us? Well, remember, I know who you are. Now that goes back to the Old Testament teaching that if you knew someone's name, you had power over them. If you know their name, you hold power over them. I know who you are, the unclean spirit says. But that doesn't hold anymore. Because the kingdom of God is at hand in the fullness of Jesus the Christ. The kingdom of God is at hand. God is now at work. So Jesus says to the unclean spirit in rebuke, come out, come out and be silent. And the unclean spirit, the scripture says, convulsing the man, cries out with a loud voice and comes out. And the people are astounded. Astounded. And what they say is, is this a new teaching? Such authority that even the unclean spirits obey him? Is this a new teaching? And scripture goes on and says, and his fame spread because of this. The question that Mark writes down is this. What is this, a new teaching? But really underneath that question is this proclamation. This is the Christ. Really, who is this? And the unclean spirit confesses for us. The Holy One of God. The Holy one of God. I know who you are. Try to think about the last time you said this. We've all said it at one time or another. Doesn't really matter what you know. It's who you know. Doesn't really matter what you know. It's who you know. You interview for a job and sometimes you walk away because you know the interview candidate behind you knew them. And Sometimes you walk away from an interview and think, I got a good shot because I know this person. It's not what you know. It's who you know who you know. And that word is clear for us today. Who you know. Who do you know that casts out unclean spirits? Who do you know that teaches with authority? Who do you know that amazes people with power and healing? The unclean spirit says it for us today. You are the Holy One of God. Epiphany is a season filled with Bible stories to convince you in that where we live in the midst of darkness and occasional snow and coldness, it is God who will strengthen you. It is God who will remind you. It is God who will convert you. It is God who will encourage you. It's God who will convince you to believe in the person of Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is God's 
good timing. The gospel's at hand. Repent and believe and find life and power and purpose and a point and a point for your daily life and a point. The surveys are almost always the same. What gives your life meaning? What gives your life meaning? You could lift, list off the top five that almost always come. Money, power, prestige, possessions, stuff. Sometimes, sometimes they'll work more like security, comfort, maybe riches. But eventually, someone will speak it for us. Purpose. Purpose. What gives your meaning life? to have a reason for life, to have a reason to get up each day, to have a reason to walk the days of your earthly journey. What am I living for? What really matters? Just a little bit more than a year ago, a year ago, you'll remember this if you're following sports, especially a basketball fan, Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter accident. You may not know Kobe Bryant, played the National Basketball Association, truly, one of the greatest players to ever play. In a foggy day, helicopter crash killed Kobe along with eight others, including his 13-year-old daughter. As that news was shared, honestly, on the sports stations, it was as if America almost gasped, lost their breath, couldn't believe it. And what followed we're a group of the richest people in the world, meaning those NBA players who make more money than we could dream of. The richest people in the world that just didn't have anything that could comfort them. Not enough money to take away the pain and the grief and the surprise and the hurt. And then if you listen to them closely, what they really talked about when it came to Kobe really wasn't so much what a great player he was or how popular he was or how rich he was. What they talked about is what kind of person he was. He made a difference. He made a difference. Some of that differences are expressed still in foundations in his name, but he made a difference to his family. Almost all of them finally said it this way. His life had a power and a purpose. I think that's what each of us would pray for. A power and a purpose and an anchor and a point in our life and living. I guess this morning, though, we should say it this way. What we really pray for is an authority, an authority. They were amazed because Jesus taught them with authority. As one who spoke, being God on behalf of God, we have that authority. We have that power. We have that purpose. We know it to be the truth. You're here this morning. We'll commune this morning because of the Holy One of God who is the Christ who on a cross died. You're watching worship this morning. You'll share virtual communion with us this morning because you know the Holy One of God, the hope and power. And what you know is this, a true and honest purpose in life every day that really gives you a reason to get up can never be built on ourselves, no matter what. It can only be built on the promises of God and the reality of Jesus Christ. Who is this that has power even over unclean spirits. Who is this that can teach with authority? We know the answer. It is the Holy One of God. In God's good timing, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. So indeed, we do indeed repent and believe the gospel. Thanks be to God for God's good timing. Amen. As our praise team reassembles, we sing the song together. I invite you to stand.
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ our King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. It's the name of Jesus. More the lost ones. So from heaven you came down. Our sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus. Christ our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Told before you, silence the boast of sin and great. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Brothers and sisters, let us share this sign of peace with each other if we've become accustomed to. Peace with you, peace, 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 peace with you, peace be with you. Peace, 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 peace. Peace, 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 peace. We continue on with our offering prayer. Our offering is reminds us that offering is a form of worship. It is a way that we give back to God what God has first given us. So let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. In the miracle of water turned wine, he revealed your glory. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He blessed it and gave thanks and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, with this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. 
Holy God, we long for your spirit to come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us gather together as a community here in person and online and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated as Thatcher is coming, Thatcher's coming forward. So we'll invite Thatcher to come on. Come on down, Thatcher. Thatcher will come down here in the middle, and if any of his family that would like to take communion with him can come and, and, and sort of surround him. So Thatcher, right here, Thatcher is a sixth grader at, at Centerville, and we're glad to have him. He, was, he worked with me a couple times this week. This last week we sat and we, we talked about communion and what it meant. Um, he's been very excited about doing it, and um, we're glad to have him here. You can just all surround him right here, right? Just make a little circle around him. And so what we'll do is let me get my gloves on and then we will commune, I will commune Thatcher. And then once Thatcher is done being communed, we'll ask all of you that would like to be communed in the family to come forward as well. Brother and sisters Thatcher and those gathered here and online know the great thing is this isn't my food, my table, your table, or our table. It's God's table, meaning all are welcome to come and receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So come, for all is now ready. Thatcher, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Thatcher, may the body and blood of Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. If you get split just a second, Thatcher, if you want to turn around and look at everybody, if everybody, can we just give Thatcher a round of applause for his first communion? Oh, wonderful. 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 Thank you so much. And if you guys want to take it, you can come up here and then you scoot over to Pastor John. Yeah, just step right up to Chip and then come right over and you can put your cup right there. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ the, broken the for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The body of Christ body, broken the for you. The blood of Christ is shed for Jessica, you. Jessica, the body of Christ broken for you. Joe, the blood of Christ is shed Lori, the body you. of Christ broken for you. Jessica. Blood of Christ is shed for you. Glory, the blood of Christ is shed for you. Worship team. I invite the the rest of you to come forward as Rick Funk does. The praise team can come forward as well. And if you are online at this time, at this time, um, you can take and eat. The food is now ready. Go ahead and do that at home as well.
you all to be please stand. Those gathered here in person, those gathered online and around the country, the body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us gather together and pray the prayer that pray the prayer after communion. Generous God, we give you thanks that again this day you have opened wide your hand and satisfied us with the food of life. The body and blood of Christ, sharing your compassionate heart, may we be blessed and given to all who hunger and thirst through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we sing together, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 
Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be your name When the sun's shining down on me When the world's all as it should be Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Through the same in the offering Blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise When the darkness closes in Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to stay, for blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. So thankful that you came this morning, very thankful on your way out. Just be cautious in case it's a little slippery and we go always blessing God's name. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the 